guy, guys. It is turning into a spectacularly gorgeous, but another windy day here in paradise in the Point Lonesome Swamp down here in the oasis of freedom on this lovely Sunday morning. It is November 20th, 2021. So uh, this is actually the doomsday sermon I was going to have last Sunday, but things have been rather hectic in various stages of my life. So uh, I guess a dollar short and a week late. Now, several of you are sending me this story from, I guess from the New York Times about to breed or not to breed. Might pick up that story tomorrow, uh, but since it's not a sermon and I've been wanting to do this for a week, we're going to make uh, today's sermon the wrap-up of COP26. This will be Hopefully, will be the last word ever needed to be uttered on the abject total failure of COP26. Just one more, uh, <laughs> one more sign of uh, of the collapse. So, uh, and I think this, if I recall, is this this kind of. You know, I've mentioned this before that Yahoo News kind of sends me their little roundup of Doomer stories. And uh, I might have to put on two pairs of all man glasses. Maybe I can do this with just one. So, this story they found in the Independent by some fellow named James Moore. They give no bio of who James Moore is. I have no clue who the man is, but he does have a brain. This is an editorial he wrote for The Independent titled, COP26 has been a failure and our lackluster world leaders are to blame. There you go. So, uh, take it away, James Moore whoever you are. And I'm going to put on a second pair. I have, I have two pairs of Dollar Tree glasses now. Uh, you know that you can add these up. Uh, so what I have is two 1.75s. So if you put two 1.75s together, you have a, uh, what is that, a 3.5? All right, now I can read James Moore. <clears throat> Take it away, James. I have only vaguely looked in on COP26, chiefly because it feels like a case of lather, rinse, repeat. The news veers from bad to good, and then back to bad, and right at the death, something emerges that elicits a great big meh, from people who actually care about their children having a planet to live on and who know what they're talking about. But deadlines, it seems, can always be broken when it comes to Mother Earth. Sure, there have been some bits and pieces that could, with a large dose of happy pills, be seen as grounds for something resembling optimism. The U.S. and China agreeing to cooperate on redu reducing emissions was a surprise. They're the world's two biggest emitters, its two biggest economies, and their geopolitical rivals. So, that's nice. But, they're still going to burn coal, they're still going to find new fossil fuel projects, and they still don't seem to have worked out that the cost of inaction is far higher than that of action. So that is not so nice. <clears throat> We're supposed to be ending deforestation by 2030 also, but I find myself asking, why not end deforestation? Now, seriously, 
will there even be any forests left by 2030? Maybe I'm exaggerating a bit there, but there will be an awful lot of trees burned and cleared for cash in the interim. What concerns me is the fact that the commitments made are only worthwhile if governments stick to them. Can we rely on them to do that as political winds blow back and forth? Even if the American-Chinese deal is worth something, even it might not last. All it takes is for the White House to flip to a Trumpy, fuck-the-planet Republican for the whole thing to fall flat on its face. And maybe Donald, I'm going to have another pissing contest with China, Trump himself gets denied. We are in for it if he does. Don't even get me thinking about that. My fear is that we may have to suffer through some catastrophic consequences to get the mostly old men who run the world to shake themselves out of their torpor and seek treatment for their addiction to hydrocarbon company cash. It might take a su succession of really nasty eco-shocks, the sort of things that make the California wildfires look like a British back garden on bonfire night. <clears throat> The world's less wealthy countries, the ones on the climate front, front line that lack the resources to complete large-scale engineering or water management projects, stand to be hit hardest by the emissions of the richer ones. The plight of their citizens, sadly, only tends to get noticed when a celebrity hops over with a camera to make a tug at the heartstrings broadcast. But even though leaders of places like China and the U.S. can fortify themselves in the former with repression, the rich will not be immune. Those fires will be back. Perhaps the low countries and maybe London too will flood. The Netherlands' efforts on the front have been quite remarkable, so good that even the rabid climate deniers and skeptics at Rupert Murdoch's Fox News have been known to hail its efforts. I think they're talking about the boy in the dike. It helps that the, the Netherlands, it helps that the country is super rich but even the sort of skills that would have a reincarnated King Canute saying, goodness me, this is how it's done, will only get you so far when trying to stop the ice caps from melting. I do wonder how Europe will respond to a vast internal migration made up of mostly you know, an internal migration made up of mostly white people as opposed to the brown people left stranded at the Polish border. Could Britain face something similar when London and the South get too soggy and their populations try to move north? Look at the projections and the maps. It isn't impossible, but I don't imagine that it will go down too well. There is still a chance that the eco-campaigners will save the wealthy's pampered asses. <clears throat> the civilized guerrilla tactics of organizations like Follow This, which buys shares in oil companies with the aim of forcing climate change through shareholder resolutions, may be more effective than blocking roads in the middle of London, but I guess this 
is a case of whatever it takes. The hard fact is that world leaders are failing. COP26 has proved that. The world's people, and especially its young people, who will have to clean up this almighty mess, will simply have to keep piling the pressure on. The climate scientist projections look horrible, and our leaders limp response to them is dismal, but the worst thing we could do in the face of them is to succumb to despair. Succumb to despair. Well, that is certainly a good option as any, uh, if succumbing to despair is, uh, your chosen reaction to this. So anyway, amen. Brother James Moore, whoever you are. And so uh, Yahoo News is telling me if I enjoyed that article, here are some more articles that I could also be sharing with you today. One billion people face dangerous heat if warming it's 2 degrees C. Yes. Fossil fuel lobbyists outnumbered any country's delegation at COP26. How about this one? Don't be fooled by greenwashing. How about inside COP26, things are turning a little surreal. Okay, more recommended stories. Climate denial is waning on the right. What's replacing it might be just as scary. Yes. What's going on right down the street from me in Sarasota? Sarasota, Florida to see faster sea level rise more very hot days in coming decades. From there to the Pacific Ocean, toxic waters devastated Pacific Coast fisheries. Who is to blame? Yes, you will not believe this one. Despite climate pledge, Amazon deforestation surges. Uh, we talked about this in the Manga Bay Roundup. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, three U.S. cities have hired chief heat officers heat officers, a sign of an emerging major threat. Here is Mother Earth on climate change. Yep. We've been hearing this one for how long? Trillions in assets may be left stranded as companies address climate change. For the record, I do not buy into that. Here's one that I should probably be reading. Unhealthy diets are bad for the environment, too. And the last one here. Environmental groups call on North Carolina Govern Governor Cooper to declare climate emergency. Climate emergency in North Carolina. I thought North Carolina was one of the safer places. There is no safer place. But anyway, I've got to wrap this up. And uh, I am pretty much uh, wrapped up on my own surging deforestation out here at... Uh, crazy crane campground so the ad goes up tonight
going to be selling my little piece of paradise in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Anybody wanting a piece of paradise in the Point Lonesome Swamp? You know where to find me. But I'm going to get out there and enjoy paradise while I still can. I will try to come back at you tomorrow with uh, to breed or not to breed. I think we've covered the story before, but who knows. That's another rant for another day. Bye, guys.